Good evening, brothers, sisters, beloveds of the Lord. How wonderful it is for us to gather together in the upper room again. As we make our journey this evening, the Eternal Light community welcomes you to share with us. And we will begin with a reading from Luke's Gospel, chapter 19, verse 1. He entered into Jericho and was going through the town when a man whose name was Zacchaeus made his appearance. He was one of the senior tax collectors and a wealthy man. He was anxious to see Jesus, what he looked like, but he was too short and could not see him for the crowd. And so he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to catch a glimpse of Jesus. Who was going to pass that way? When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and spoke to him, Zacchaeus, come down, hurry, because I must stay at your house today. And he hurried down and welcomed him joyfully. They all complained when they saw what was happening. He has gone to stay in a sinner's house, they said. And Zacchaeus stood his ground and said to the Lord, Look, sir, I am going to give half my property to the poor. And if I have cheated anyone, I will pay him back four times the amount. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to your house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to save and to seek what was lost. Beloved brothers and sisters, this text is a very, very wonderful text. Why? Because Zacchaeus was a man who knew his limitations, just as you and I know our limitations. Zacchaeus was a man who understood that he was short and the crowd would inhibit him from seeing. And so he ran ahead of the people to get a different perspective. He climbed a sycamore tree to get a different perspective. It did not matter what others thought about him. We know what they felt about tax collectors. They were treated as outcasts. But Zacchaeus was very mindful that this man, Jesus, could do something for him. The text ended by saying, Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. Having climbed the tree, Jesus looked up, brought him down. Zacchaeus entered into conversation with Jesus. Right away, there was no question asked. Because when you are in the presence of Jesus, there is something that happens within you that allows you to face your truth. And so Zacchaeus was able to say, all those that I have wronged, I will repay. And I will make restitution four times the amount I have taken. Well, he has already begun to say to me and to say to you that when there is wrong, something must be done about it. And so, having entered into the house with Jesus, they were now into fellowship. Jesus invites all of us to come with him. Jesus wants fellowship, not necessarily in a physical house, although that's where we are gathered as domestic church, but in the house of our hearts, because we are the living stones in this house. And as he enters in, he enters into conversation with us. Is there anything that you and I must do to have a different perspective? Zacchaeus as he took on a different perspective, was able to see himself. I need to see myself. Sometimes when people talk to me and say to me, Deborah, this is how you are. Deborah, you both. Deborah, there is anger. Deborah, so and so. I may not want to see that side of me. But the reality is, in the light of God's word, I must face my truth. I must be honest. I must be humble. I must be prepared to renounce whatever is wrong in my life, and I must ask the forgiveness of God. I don't know what conversation Zacchaeus and Jesus had. 
But I want to believe that it was a moment of conversion, a deep, deep moment of conversion for Zacchaeus. He was not the only person who experienced such a, had such an experience. Paul, on his way to Damascus, had to face his truth. He was a murderer. He was there consenting to the death of Stephen. He was a lover of what he believed and he fought for it. He had to experience change in his life. There was a woman who was found in adultery. This woman, when brought to Jesus, Jesus did not condemn her. In fact, he turned things around for her. Woman, who condemned thee? Neither do I. As you and I listen, we can bring ourselves right back to Romans chapter 1, reading from verses 18 to 32, which is quite long, but I encourage you to read it on your own. We see that human beings do have a problem. God does not have a problem. According to Romans 1, everything that there is to be known about God can be perfectly known. We have only to look at creation. We have only to look at all that is around us. And we know that there is someone bigger than ourselves, someone greater than ourselves. What is human beings' problem? Our problem is our unwillingness to engage. Our unwillingness to pause and to have that moment where God can be allowed to speak to our hearts so that change will take place. As you and I continue to read Paul's letter to the Romans, it says in chapter 3, verse 23, all have sinned, all have fallen short of the glory of God. Both Jew and Greek alike, we are all different. We have all done different things. What have we done? Deuteronomy chapter 18 speaks to us very loudly and says to the people of old that God has brought us out of, a, when God brought them out of Egypt, they were not to continue to practice the detestable things that their ancestors did. In fact, they were to put an end to sorcery and to divination, so it's saying, voodoo, and we have all the corresponding things in our cultures, whether it is that we are into witchcraft, whether it is we are into the seances, the reading of tea leaves, all of those things Deuteronomy chapter 18 will speak to us about. Why? Because you and I are called to a place of faith in Christ Jesus, not to trust in horses, not to trust in tea leaves, not to trust in signs. You and I must also recognize that sin clings to us according to the right of the letter to the Hebrews. And so as we read, there are the sins of the flesh, the lust of the heart, the desires of the world, the pride of, the la of life. Where are we? You and I are called, like Zacchaeus, to have a new perspective on our lives. A perspective that allows us to appreciate that the Son of Man came to save and to seek out those who were lost. Let us for a moment listen to a testimony of our brother. I am a cradle Catholic, having been born into a Catholic family. I knew about God, but I did not know him. There was no connection between us, so I thought. So in my teenage life and early adult life, I drifted away from the church because that life was boring and restrictive. So I went in to the world and enjoyed worldly things. I partied, gambled, went in brothels and other houses of disrepute. I enjoyed life to the fullest. Sin was sweet, sweeter than honey. I enjoyed that life and I did what I wanted. And I remember when we were liming, we had a saying, death rides a horse and we go to do what we want. I had a coworker who was a gambler 
and I accompanied him to gambling houses. My function was to hold the winnings because when he won, he ended up losing the money. So my job was to hold the money and tell him, no more money for you. I enjoyed going with my friends to brothels. We enjoyed the shows. We enjoyed the ladies' company. I wanted to engage in the act of prostitution, but did not commit the act, though not out of trying. There was one instance when it, it finished before it started. The second incident was when we were looking to get it done. I saw my girlfriend's face in front of me. I froze and left immediately. When I told my friends about it, they laughed and did not believe it was the truth. I had a very nasty anger problem, and I used abusive and obscene language freely. It was my method of communicating effectively. I remember abusing people and enjoying it and laughing. But that was not a nice thing to do. There was a time when a guy got, got me so angry, I picked up a concrete block, and my intention was to hit him in the head with the block. I was held back. There was another incident when I followed with somebody, and I got so angry, I told the person, and I will shoot him. I care about no one. I went home and indicated to my wife what happened and my intention to purchase a gun. Oh, yes, I wanted to purchase a gun. I really wanted to purchase a gun. The police arrived at my residence, and I asked the police, you come to arrest me? My wife came out with my son in her arms, and she was crying. The policeman, for some reason, decided to speak to me and tell me that I must change my ways, having regard to my family. I listened to him, and he further indicated that if we were to search this residence and any weapon found, everyone will be arrested. My wife said, I need to go and get therapy. So I went and did anger management. I understood what was my problem. My problem was male aggression. That, that is what they said. So I said, I could control it. But oh, so wrong I was. That was my pride, my ego, my foolishness talking. I remember a time I was sleeping, and a voice said to me, you see that anger problem that you have? That would kill you. Stop it. I forgot. The next day, a relative came to me, and we had a disagreement. I was very abusive to that person. So abusive that the neighbors came out, they watched and listened. I did not care. I was letting off steam. I was just putting him in his place. But my head started to pound, pong like a DJ on a truck at carnival time. I said to my wife, this head hurted me, you know, girl. Give me four clover garlic, yes, before I drop down here. And after quite a long time, when I calmed myself, I remembered the dream. I said, you see, you have to do something. But God was talking to me. I was hearing, you know, but not listening. My wife said, let us go to church. So I went to church. To please her, I went to church. And when I went to church, the mass was dead. The mass was dead. And I felt no connection. I felt nothing whatsoever. So I decided to see me, 
are not going. Couple of years again later, she came back again. She said, we need to go to church. The children getting big. They need to know about God. So I went. But this time it was different in the sense that one day at Mass, the, preach, the preacher was preaching. And I say, see, I find this man could finish, you know, but I want to go, man. I really ain't comfortable here. I make it out of here. And as soon as the mass finished, I left immediately. But on going home, I felt troubled in my heart. And I said, that is not right. You're not supposed to be in church and have that kind of feeling. So I said, God, help me. Send me to some church, some church where you want, where I could get to know you and things. So God sent me to another Catholic parish. And when I went there, I felt that instant correction, connection. They talked about Life for the Spirit seminar. And although I wanted to go, I decided to go. And I went. And I had no regret for that. My life has changed. I am so happy now. My home it's a home of peace. And I know that on, on all that I have done, that God is with me, a wretched sinner like me, he forgave me. Thank you, Jesus. And I invite you all, regardless of your situation, God still loves you. Salvation is free. Take it. Thank you. Every day they pass me by I can see it in their eyes Empty people filled with care Headed who knows where On they go through private pain Living fair to fair Laughter hides their silent cries Only Jesus has People need the Lord People need the Lord At the end of broken dreams He's the open door People need the Lord People need the Lord When will we realize That we must give our lives for people need the Lord For brother Brandon shared with us how he responded to the grace of God. How he responded was that he came to a place of repentance, a place of acknowledging that what was happening in his life, he was out of control. He needed to repent. He needed to say to God, he was sorry for his sin and then be ready to receive God's gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that has enabled him to make the journey that he can now freely say, I no longer curse. I no longer feel anger that there is deeper peace in my soul. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11, we read from verse 9. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. For the one who asks always receives, and the one who searches always finds. The one who knocks will always have the door open to him. What father among you would hand his son a stone when he asked for bread? Or hand him a snake instead of a fish? Or hand him a scorpion when he asks for an egg? If you then who are evil know how to give your children what is good, 
how much more will our Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? And that's what we are preparing for. We are preparing to receive the gift of God's Holy Spirit. The Spirit which is the giver of life, the bringer of truth, the convictor of hearts. The Spirit who enables us to have the power to live the godly life. The life that is free from sin. So my dear brothers and sisters, as we are in the upper room, as we are emptying ourselves of all the garbage that we have collected, let us be also mindful that there was another human being like us who was open to the Holy Spirit, and that's Mary, our mother. We are called to be open as she was, to say yes to God, to acknowledge our limitations like Zacchaeus did, but at the same time, to ask God, give me power from on high. What would that do for you? What would it do? What did it do for me? I was very introverted. I will not speak with many persons. My life was quite sheltered. It brought me to a place of openness. When I was confirmed at 10 years old, I learned about the gifts of wisdom, knowledge, understanding, counsel, piety, fortitude, the fear of the Lord. We find them all in Isaiah 11. Did I understand them? Maybe very little of it. But when the Spirit of God came into my life anew, something new happened. I learned that the gospel had, the Bible had more of the URPs than governments would ever know. You, standing for the utterance gift, the gift of tongues, the gift of prophecy, the gift of interpreting tongues, are the revelational gifts, wisdom, knowledge, discernment. Then I came to understand about the power gifts, the gift of faith and miracles and healing. When the Spirit of God comes, the Spirit of God brings to life all of these various gifts. The gifts that sanctify our lives that we find in Isaiah and the gifts that enable us to carry out the ministry of the church that brings people into the fullness of life in Christ. But the gifts were not all. I came to discover that our lives were meant to be fruit-bearing. And in this last week, if you and I were journeying with the church through the Mass, we were reading about John chapter 15, about the fruitful vine, and how the Father prunes, where the repentance part of it is that pruning. But the Father prunes so that you and I can be a fruit, and be a fruit in plenty. And so, in the fruit bearing, I came to discover that joy was one of these fruits. I cannot say that my life knew great joy. I wasn't an unhappy child. I was never an unhappy woman. I had no regrets. But to experience the joy of the Lord, the joy of knowing Jesus, the joy of opening my life that he will sway me and carry me wherever, I didn't even know that that possibility existed. The ability to love, to love as God called me to love, sacrificial love, giving love, receiving love. Those graces are the fruit-bearing part of my life and the fruit-bearing that all our lives are called to. To be able to suffer and to suffer gladly, even in difficult moments like COVID-19, and to suffer with joy, as James would say in the epistle, to count it all joy when you have to suffer trials for the sake of the Lord. Beloved brothers and sisters, you and I can read Galatians chapter 5, where we talk about the fruit of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And you and I who were born in a certain era know more about longanimity and benignity and mildness, more of those fruits that your life and my life will bear if only we will do what, uh, what we are told in the Gospel of Luke chapter 11, ask, ask and you will receive. Our Blessed Mother didn't really have to ask. 
God engaged her according to Luke's gospel chapter 1. God sent to her the angel Gabriel and said to her, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. And the angel continued to dialogue with our blessed mother. And our blessed mother came to the place where she said, Be it done to me according to the word, to thy word. She said, whatever God wanted, let it happen. And you and I are invited because one week away from now, on Pentecost Saturday evening, you and I will have another opportunity to say to God, be it done to me according to thy word. Pour out your spirit anew within me. Are there obstacles that will prevent this from happening? Sometimes, you and I say, we are not worthy to receive all of these blessings. Sometimes there are fears in our lives. Will my personality change? Would God ask more of me than he is asking now? Well, you and I must know that God is always on our side. And God would only want that which is good and beautiful for your life and for my life. So there is no need to fear there is no need to think that you are not worthy. Which of us would have thought that we were worthy? None. Let's contemplate the thief on the cross. Two of them, one of the right and one of the left. If we are to look at the Gospel of Luke chapter 23, what do we find? That one is there in condemnation and bitter bickering and murmuring. The other one would look at him and say to him, hello, hello. We are here because of what we have done. We are here because we are getting the right sentence for what we have done. But this man has done nothing. And then he turned to Jesus and he said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he must have been heartened to hear, this day, today, you will be with me in paradise. What a wonderful moment of encounter between Jesus and that thief on the cross. Wherever you and I are, as long as we can say to God, I am sorry, forgive me. And if we need sacramental confession, then a time will come when this will be possible. But at now, you and I can cry out to God, Lord, be merciful to me. Lord, I am a sinner. Lord, change my life and be open to the grace that God wants to give you. What happened when Mary said yes? She conceived. She conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that which was born of her became her Savior, my Savior, and my Lord. Today, you and I have an opportunity. If we want to receive God's gifts... The Lord Jesus, in my heart, I want you to be my Savior and Lord. I am sorry for all that I have done. And for your Spirit, empower my life. Let my life bear the gifts and the fruit of the Spirit. Do not be afraid. You may want to ask yourself and to dialogue a bit in this week about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So you may want as a family to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 13, and 14 and read it together and talk about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You may also want to go back to Romans chapter 1, beginning at verse 18, and hear what God has to say, what Paul would say, about knowing God and what we have done as human beings to ignore the environment, to ignore creation and not come to know God through that which he has created. Let this week be a week of prayer, a week where you and I would enter deeply into the presence of God so that we can know the power of God in our lives. May God bless you, bless you. Bless you.